There's another really simple, but again, a few steps, have to walk through it once, thing that we get asked about a lot, and that's universal device pullers. It just never gets old. It does it. Well, they're insanely useful. Um, I have a special one that I want to bring up in here in a minute. But before we go in, I want to clarify one thing which is the difference between a universal device polar and a custom polar. Mm. Okay, now custom polars came in in NPM version 12.1. They've been around for quite a while. However, custom polars are when you have a standard statistic that you want to collect on, CPU, RAM, what have you. But instead of using the, the object ID that we are using that's built into NPM, you want to use a separate one. Maybe you don't like the way that we're calculating RAM. A lot of articles on Thwack about that. Or maybe you want to use a different CPU metric that the vendor is providing special because of that kind of uh, hardware or whatever. That is what a custom polar is for. A custom polar lets you reassign the CPU, the memory, the uh, operating system, the device type, pulling from a different object ID. But, but from a subset of elements, not just anything that you could get to with an OID. Correct, exactly. And uh, you don't need to set up a universal device polar, which we're going to do in a minute. You don't need that to do a custom polar. Because you do a custom polar in the web interface. Right. They're two separate things. So now that I've clarified that, I want to look at universal device polars. So one of the first questions we get when it comes to universal device polars is, where do I find these OIDs? Where do I find these object IDs? Well, they're all in Google. Yes, everything's in Google. Everything's in Google. Yeah, I mean, that's how I usually find it because I know the vendor. I usually know the piece of hardware that I'm trying to connect to. Mm -hmm. And I have an idea about what I need to monitor, what piece of data I'm trying to pull uh -huh. back. And so that's just a great way to just search for that based on this criteria. And it'll take you to a page that very often will have details about what that thing actually is returning, how it is. Is it, is it uh, table data that comes back? Is it an individual, uh, individual poll element? And so that really sets that up to make it easy to configure. But Really? I end up using the uh, SNMP walk uh, yeah. executable a lot because a lot of times I'm connecting to something really, really weird that may or may not have a page. And so I may need to just explore that thing right. in real time, walk through uh, the MIB. The and entire set of output, right? Uh, and just for those people who aren't familiar with it, it literally asks for every possible com numeric combination of OID that could answer it. And it says, I got a response from this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. It's a ping sweep for MIBS. It is exactly that. And what's nice is that if you know you're expecting a particular kind of value, it's going to be this word, it's going to be this number, it's going to be in this range, you know what to look for. It outputs into a simple text file, and you can search through it that way. That's and gives you way. sample values. Right, exactly. So, so that you can say, oh, it's this one, or it's not that one, it's this other one. So that's some of the ways that you can find it. Now, I want to set up a couple here just to walk through the process. Mm -hmm. The first one I'm going to do uh, really, really manually. We're going to create a new universal device polar here. So in this case, I know the number. I'm mm. not even sure. Like, you got a very specific thing that you're looking for. Yeah, exactly. Um, and by the way, in Thwack Camp, in the Thwack Camp 2018, in the session, um, how to monitor like a network engineer when you're a sysadmin, mm. uh, Destiny goes through the whole concept of what these numbers are and what they mean. So uh, I'm not going to belabor this lab with it. You can reference that. That's in the show notes. So I'm going to go to uh, 1.3.6.1.2.1.25. Dot four dot two dot one dot, and you can see as I'm doing this that it is giving me the name of it. This is the HR software run name. Okay, I could have done a lookup of that, browse the MIB tree if I wanted to do that, um, but it just fills it in for me. Sometimes you'll do it and it will come up with nothing, which means that this is not one that we have in our MIB database, and that's okay also. Even if it's not in the SolarWinds MIB database, we still can pull values and get numbers back. Um, another it, question that we get. Well, well, and the other question we get is how do I get custom uh, MIBs added? to the MIB database so that I don't have to add up, so I don't have to go and manually add them? And the answer is if you go to support.solowins.com, yep. uh, click on NPM, there's a lesson on how to submit them, and then we yep. roll them into uh, releases About periodically. About once a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, almost. It, it happens really frequently. So here it is. There's, there's the value. I'm going to leave everything else the same. Um, I'm going to put it in a different group. So the group is also another one. So in here, I'm going to put it into lab. Group, like that. You're creating a new group. Creating a new group, which actually appears over there on the left. And I want to test it on something. So mm. I'm going to go test it on a Windows box. Since you know exactly what it is, I'm assuming that you know that it won't necessarily pull data from everything. It's uh, going to pull some very specific kinds of data, which is kind of fun. So I'll use 
that's fine. The magic DB. Oop, back, and I'm going to hit test. Give it a second to pull those values. There we go. And this is an interesting one. System idle process, system service host, system is what this is, what all of the items in this MIB block are, is the SNMP version of task manager. OK, the running tasks. I can get the running tasks, the amount of memory they're using, the, uh, the PID of them, and so on. And I can actually recreate that on my Orion page, on the node details page, mm -hmm. strictly from SNMP if I wanted to, okay. which is kind of cool. Now, also a little esoteric. A little, but I think this whole uh, episode, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so it is. However, um, there's one that we get asked about a lot. There's actually two that we get asked about a lot. Right. Battery. Mm. And temperature. Yes. So I want to I want to take a second and just look at one of the normal ones. Uh, like I said, uh, battery temperature. So in uh, in the OIDs, we actually have some of these standard ones, and one of them is the Cisco uh, fan state supply temperature status value. Mm -hmm. Temperature status value. So it's already in here. So now what do I do? If it's already in, how do I get it working on things? I right click, and I choose assign. That takes me right to the space I was just a second ago as if I had just created it. In this case, I'm going to assign it to this 2821. Once again, I want to test it. You can test it against multiple values. if you. I right. could do bunches of them. Okay. And it comes back 24. That's a really cold router. Uh, we're overclocking that, so it's uh, liquid helium cooling. Oh, excellent. No, it's not. It's a frost problem, though. It is not a frost problem. It's in Celsius. That's uh, why. That well, is. then we've got to convert that. We do. And so there's a way to do that. So first thing you should know is that when you have a regular, sort of a, a more regular uh, uh, OID, you just apply it. You hit finish. It's applied. It begins collecting data and mm -hmm. so on. However, in this case, this isn't the number we want. I need to do that conversion. So Our office in Cork would like that. Cancel. Number. They would be appreciated. And yet I still have a hard time knowing, is that really, really, is that bursting into flame hot or just kind of warm? So in this case, we want to create a transform. So I'm going to open up, uh, my transform results, a little bit of an informational about what this is. I'm going to call it lab temp change. Notice that I'm, I keep on putting underscores, and it keeps on bouncing me back to the beginning. You can't do underscores. You can't do special characters. You can do capitals. Lab temp change. I could give it a description. The group I want to put it in, I'm going to put it in the Leon Linux group, just because I feel like it. The polling interval is the default, which mm -hmm. is five minutes. Or I can set this one to be higher or lower. I'm going to leave it at the default. And here we go with the formula. And again, if you're not familiar with this, you might have a bit of a panicky moment. But mm -hmm. you don't have to. This is a link right there. And there's some tools to help you do this. Mm -hmm. First thing I'm going to do is add a function. And we actually have built-in functions. It's worth taking a few minutes and exploring them. I want to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. There's my C2F function. And if I click in the middle and say, add a poll. Cisco environment monitor temperature status value. I stick that in there. Next. Now, I just created, I just created a new conversion, 75.2. So the answer is room temperature. Mm -hmm. It's just fine. For, for my data center, we're, we're within the boundaries of that. So those universal device polars. Again, there's a few moving parts to it, but once you've gone through it once, you realize how amazingly simple and amazingly powerful this feature is. Mm -hmm.